Have you ever considered what would happen if a disaster struck your town? Today I'll share essential items every American household should have, especially as some might become harder to find in the coming years. Imagine this, a massive hurricane tears through your town, knocking out power for weeks. Your fridge is full, but without electricity, that food quickly becomes inedible. This is where a biomass device comes in. Biomass devices are essentially gadgets that run on organic materials. Think wood chips, leftover agricultural waste, even animal manure. These materials can be burned directly for heat or converted into biofuels like biogas or ethanol for cooking and generating electricity. Here's the real kicker. Biomass devices, like a good old-fashioned wood stove, can be your knight in shining armor when disaster strikes. Remember the great blackout of 2003? People who had wood stoves were the envy of the neighborhood. They could cook hot meals, boil water, and stay warm while everyone else huddled in the cold and dark. Now the government is looking to phase out these devices because they produce carbon monoxide. But listen, in a true emergency, the small amount of CO your wood stove puts out for a day or two is a drop in the bucket compared to the industrial emissions happening every day. My point? Get yourself a biomass device. Pair it with a wood stove or a cook stove that can function on biomass fuel. Store it safely, and you'll be thanking yourself when a crisis hits. This one hits close to home. A few years back, a blizzard dumped several feet of snow on our town, and the power was out for days. My neighbor, a retired firefighter, had a wood stove in his basement. He not only kept his family warm, but also cooked hot meals for everyone on our street. It was a real lifesaver, and it made me realize just how important these kinds of alternative heating and cooking options can be. All right, folks, let's move on to item number two on our emergency preparedness list, survival seeds. Now picture this, a scorching summer beats down, crops wither in the field, and the government restricts the amount of food you can buy each week. Sounds like a scene from a movie, right? Unfortunately, droughts and other disruptions to food supply chains are a real possibility. Here's where survival seeds become your hero. Imagine having a little garden bursting with fresh fruits and vegetables, even during a crisis. You can supplement your non-perishable food stockpile with healthy, homegrown produce, keeping yourself and your family well-nourished. Remember the big earthquake in California a few years back? Talk about a food supply disruption. Transportation networks were messed up for weeks. People who had gardens were better off. They could whip up fresh meals while others relied solely on canned goods. This is why I highly recommend stocking up on non-perishable food and survival seeds. Survival seeds offer a steady supply of food, year after year. But there's a catch. The government is looking to regulate some types of seeds. They claim it's to protect American agriculture from plant diseases and weeds. Here's the thing that gets me. Open pollinated seeds. The best type for survival gardens are the ones getting the heat. These seeds, unlike hybrids, can be replanted year after year, saving you money and ensuring a reliable source of food. Plus, they tend to be more nutrient-dense than commercially produced varieties. By growing your own food with survival seeds, you can gain incredible independence. You're not reliant on supermarkets or supply chains that can be unreliable during emergencies. It's a fantastic way to take charge of your food security and feel empowered, especially in uncertain times. A few years back, I had a scare with my health. I needed to change my diet and eat more fresh fruits and veggies. That's when I started a little garden in my backyard. Not only did it give me access to fresh, healthy food, but it was surprisingly therapeutic. It was calming and rewarding to watch my plants grow and nourish myself with the fruits of my labor, literally. Now, the benefits of survival seeds go way beyond just your plate. With a variety of seeds at your disposal, you can choose crops that thrive in your specific climate and soil conditions. This means a higher chance of successful harvests, even during challenging times. And let's not forget the mental health boost. Gardening can be a great way to relieve stress and feel a sense of accomplishment, especially during a crisis. Here's the crazy part. The very act of gardening might soon be under attack. Yes, you heard that right. The government is pushing for regulations on backyard gardens, claiming it's for environmental protection. They want to register your garden and control what you plant. This is mind-boggling. Remember a few years ago when some states restricted buying seeds during the pandemic? It seems like anything that empowers us to take control of our food becomes a target. My advice? Don't wait. Stock up on survival seeds before stricter regulations kick in. Sites like Amazon are still your best bet for acquiring a good variety. Let's move on to item number three, the humble space blanket. You might know it as an emergency blanket, but trust me, it's much more than that. Imagine this, 
You're on a thrilling mountain hike, enjoying the fresh air and breathtaking views. Suddenly, the weather takes a nasty turn. A blizzard rolls in, temperatures plummet, and you're caught without proper shelter. Scary, right? Here's where a space blanket becomes your hero. This lightweight compact blanket is made of a special material that reflects heat. It's like having a tiny shield against the dropping temperatures. Wrapping yourself in a space blanket can trap your body heat, preventing hypothermia and potentially saving your life. Think of it as buying yourself precious time until help arrives. But space blankets aren't just for keeping you warm. They are incredibly versatile tools that can be used in a variety of situations. For example, let's face it, accidents happen, especially during emergencies. A space blanket can be used as a sterile barrier to cover wounds, helping prevent infection. It can also be used to create a sling for sprained wrists or ankles, providing some much-needed support until you can get medical attention. Similarly, it can be used to signal for help. Lost or injured? No problem! Space blankets are highly reflective. By waving it in the air or laying it out flat, you can create a giant signal for search and rescue teams. It's a way of saying, hey, I'm over here and I need help. A few years back, a prepper friend of mine went camping with his kids. One afternoon, they had a sudden downpour. The kids were soaked and shivering. Luckily, he's a prepper just like me and had a few space blankets on hand. He wrapped the kids up like little space aliens and it did wonders. They were warm and comfortable in no time. It was a simple solution that made a big difference. Here's the thing that concerns me. Some regulations are being proposed that might make space blankets harder to get in the future. They might become restricted for purchase by the general public and only available to medical professionals. This doesn't make any sense. These are affordable, life-saving tools that everyone should have access to, don't you think? Regardless, don't wait until a crisis strikes. Invest in a good quality space blanket. For now, they are readily available online and in most outdoor stores. It's a small investment that could make a huge difference in an emergency. Now this one might seem a little technical, but trust me, ham radio is a game changer in an emergency. Imagine a scenario ripped straight out of a movie. A massive earthquake rocks your town, buildings crumble, power lines snap, and cell towers topple over. Suddenly you're cut off from the world. No phone calls, no internet, no way to contact loved ones. Scary, right? Here's where a ham radio comes in. Unlike your cell phone, which relies on infrastructure that can be easily damaged, a ham radio operates independently. It's like having your own personal communication network, free from the grid. Think of it like this. Ham radios use specific frequencies allocated by the government, similar to walkie-talkies, but with a much wider range. You can communicate directly with other ham radio operators, bypassing overloaded phone lines and jammed cell towers. But the benefits of ham radio go beyond just local communication. These devices can tap into regional and even international networks. Imagine being able to contact someone across the country, or even the globe during a disaster. This opens doors to vital information sharing, resource coordination, and receiving support from a wider community of volunteers and responders. Here's the worrying part. There's a push to make ham radio operations more restrictive. Some propose that only licensed individuals will be allowed to use them in the future. Now getting a ham radio license isn't rocket science, but it's a step that might discourage some people. Look, I'm not saying you need to become a radio expert overnight, but understanding the potential of ham radio is crucial. It's one of the best ways to ensure communication during an emergency, even when all else fails. Let's face it, our lives are powered by electronics. Phones, radios, medical devices, the list goes on. And in a crisis, staying connected and having access to these things becomes even more crucial. That's where portable solar chargers and solar generators come in. Imagine a scenario ripped from the headlines. A massive hurricane slams into your town, power lines are down, and the grid is out. You're suddenly cut off from the world, unable to charge your phone or access vital information. Not ideal, right? This is where these amazing solar gadgets come in. A portable solar charger is a compact device that uses sunlight to charge your electronics. Think of it like a little pocket-sized power plant. It's lightweight, portable, and perfect for keeping your phone and other small devices juiced up during an emergency. A few years back, we had a brutal winter storm that knocked out power for days. It was freezing cold and everyone was huddled at home. But guess what? I had a little solar charger in my backpack. I was able to charge my phone, listen to the radio for updates, and even send messages to let my family know I was okay. It was a lifesaver, literally. But wait, there's more. For bigger power needs, we have solar generators. These bad boys are like miniature solar power plants. They use solar panels to capture sunlight, 
and convert it into electricity, which is then stored in a battery for later use. This means you can power things like lights, medical equipment, and even some small appliances, all without relying on the grid. The part that worries me is the restrictions. Some places are already considering restrictions on these solar devices. California, for example, is looking to ban the sale of gas-powered generators by 2028. And who knows what could happen to solar chargers in the future? Don't wait until it's too late. Invest in a good quality portable solar charger or solar generator. You can find these devices online and at many outdoor stores. Remember, an ounce of preparedness is worth a pound of panic during a crisis. Now, this one might sound a little scary, but hear me out. Pepper spray can be a valuable tool for self-defense in an emergency. Imagine you're walking home alone after work when you notice someone following you. You start to feel unsafe. This is where pepper spray can come in handy. Pepper spray contains a concentrated form of capsaicin, the stuff that makes chili peppers hot. When it comes into contact with someone's eyes, nose, or mouth, it causes temporary blindness, choking, coughing, and a burning sensation. It's enough to make anyone back off, giving you precious time to escape and call for help. Studies show that pepper spray is incredibly effective in stopping attackers. A 2000 study by the International Association of Chiefs of Police found that pepper spray use reduced physical attacks by a whopping 93%. That's a pretty convincing statistic. There are a few reasons why pepper spray is a good choice for self-defense. First, it is non-lethal. Pepper spray isn't intended to seriously injure someone. It's designed to incapacitate them long enough for you to escape. Also, it is easy to use. Most pepper spray canisters have a simple trigger mechanism. Even under pressure, you can deploy it quickly and effectively. Similarly, it is very lightweight and portable. Pepper spray canisters are small and can easily be clipped onto a belt or backpack for easy access. Pepper spray also works regardless of your physical strength or fighting skills. It's a great equalizer, especially for those who might feel vulnerable. A friend of mine was once walking her dog late at night when a stray dog approached them aggressively. She didn't want to hurt the dog, but she needed to protect herself and her pet. Thankfully, she had pepper spray. A quick burst in the air deterred the dog, and they were able to walk away safely. So it is not just to protect against humans, it can be used against any creature with eyes. Unfortunately, pepper spray is becoming illegal in some parts of the world. It's always best to check your local news and regulations before carrying any self-defense tool. Don't worry, there are options. If pepper spray isn't available in your area, consider a stun gun. Stun guns use high-voltage electricity to temporarily disable an attacker. They come in various sizes, with features like built-in lights and rechargeable batteries. Now I know what you might be thinking. Livestock in an emergency preparedness kit? Well, hold on to your hats. For some preppers, livestock isn't just about survival, it's about self-sufficiency. Imagine raising chickens that provide you with fresh eggs, or having a goat that supplies milk and cheese. It's a way to take control of your food source, especially during times when grocery stores might be scarce. My grandparents lived on a farm, and they raised chickens and a couple of goats. It was amazing. They had a constant supply of fresh eggs and milk, and they even shared their bounty with their neighbors. It was a great example of self-reliance and community spirit. Now here's the thing that gets me riled up. There's a growing movement, especially in Europe, that wants to restrict or even eliminate livestock farming. They claim these animals are a major source of pollution. And yes, animal methane emissions are a concern. But here's the deal. Instead of getting rid of livestock altogether, shouldn't we be looking for smarter solutions? Sustainable farming practices, responsible animal management, and advancements in technology can play a role in reducing the environmental impact of livestock. Here in the U.S., the conversation around livestock seems to be taking a different turn. Some argue that livestock are bad for the environment, but it feels more like an excuse to limit our food sources and control what we eat. Look, I'm all for protecting our planet, but before we demonize entire groups of animals, let's have an honest conversation. Let's explore solutions instead of resorting to extremes. We need to talk about travel. Now I know what you're thinking. Travel? How does that fit into an emergency preparedness kit? Well, hold on a second. As you'll see, travel might become more important than you ever imagined. Let's be honest, most people don't think twice about traveling. We hop in our cars, book flights, and explore new places. It's a part of life, a way to experience different cultures and broaden our horizons. But what if I told you that this freedom to travel could be restricted in the future? Have you heard of the 15-minute city concept? 
It's an idea being pushed by some organizations that envision cities designed so that everything you need is within a 15-minute walk, bike ride, or public transportation trip. Sounds convenient, right? Here's the catch. Imagine a world where you never have to leave your 15-minute city. Schools, shops, entertainment, it's all right there. On the surface, it might seem appealing. But where's the adventure, the discovery, the joy of exploring new places and meeting new people? Here's the part that concerns me the most. The idea of restricting travel isn't just about convenience. It could be a way to control people's movement and limit their exposure to outside ideas. It's about creating confined communities where everyone follows the same rules. Think about it. Why would someone want to limit your ability to travel? Is it really about saving the planet, or is it about something else entirely? Could it be about control? History is full of examples of those in power restricting movement to maintain control over the population. Travel isn't just about leisure. It's about learning, growing, and expanding your horizons. It's about experiencing different cultures and ways of life. It's about fostering understanding and connection with others. The freedom to travel is a fundamental human right, and we shouldn't take it for granted. While restrictions on travel might seem like a distant, dystopian nightmare, it's important to be aware of these trends. Knowledge is power. By staying informed and engaged, we can work towards a future where travel remains a cherished freedom, not a restricted privilege. Speaking of surviving disasters, click the video on screen now to learn how you can survive the first 100 days after any disaster.